this is Tim Pierce. I'm going to show you the rhythm, and for the lead, click the link below. You get access to a lesson on that, plus tons of other free bonus videos not on YouTube. We just made it across 50,000 subscribers. Thanks so much for your support. Let's do it! So hey guys, the first thing we got to do is the open tuning. It's an open G chord. So these strings stay the same. The, D, the G and the B, but the high string drops to D to match the D string there, and the low string drops to D also. And then the A string drops to G. So down a whole step here, down a whole step here on the fifth string, the next three stay the same, and then the high E goes down a whole step also. And once you've done that, you get these big, beautiful, open, ringy chords. And I heard an interview with Keith the other night where he talked about all the extra stuff that happens when all these chords ring together in this key when he discovered it. And he also took one of the strings off. I think it was the low E. So check check the internet on that, but that's what I think. Yep. So I think he just had the top five strings. So what this is, our index finger is planted on fret 12 all the way across the top five strings. And then we bring the second finger up to 13, B13, third finger up to D14, and that forms the top part of the chord. And it's two downstrokes, and it's staccato, so you gotta stop the chord after you play it. And the way I do that is with the flesh from this hand and the flesh from this hand. I lift up, I lift up over here to create a mute over here on the left hand, and I press down over here to create a mute with the right hand. So I get that staccato first chord. Staccato second chord too, same drill, right? And then bring the hand all the way down to here. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're on fret five. And it's the same shape, we're just doing a different pattern. So I mute, I play long, and then long again for the rest of the way. So it's just one staccato stab. And that's how I do it. So back up here. Play with it. You can mute some of them. You can do them legato and also anytime you want the strings to stop, you can always rely on the palm of your right hand. And then we move up, slide this thing up three frets up to fret eight. We bar across in the same way, but there's a slight difference. What happens here is we shift the third finger over to G. See, we were doing it on the D string all the time. It shifts over from the D to the G, and it's pretty darn clever. <laughs> because it creates a different tonality. So what, what you've got here is index finger on fret eight, barred all the, all the way across these five strings, and then third finger, it's at G10, second finger at B9. You strike it twice. And slide it back down to the original position we were in, but remember, we're dealing with the B string and the G string now rather than the B string and the D string. See, this shifts over for this new inversion. And then we bring it down all the way to the first fret. And we do something different there. It's just one note we pick up. And then we pick up the other two notes again. But when we, when we walk down here to the first fret, it's just one note. We're bringing the third finger up to G3. Slide up again. And it's our second version, which is second finger on fret four and third finger on fret five. But we're on the B and the G string. Slide it up again to fret five. Go back to the original version here with the third finger on string four. So I'm going to do the whole cycle kind of slow. So 
So this upper part of the chord is being played three different ways. And I'll review it again with you. The first way, we're on the second and third string, the B and G, G string. And it's uh, second finger here, third finger here. Slide it down to fret five. Same thing. And then the new version here with just one finger on G3. Back to this one. We're on the second two strings. And then back to this one. We're, we're on strings two and four. So, two strings there, two strings there, one string here, two strings here, and then the other two strings here. I'm bringing my index finger to round it out. So back to the top, we're on the second and fourth string for that chord. One other thing to note, when I'm down here with my left hand, it's important for me, and you can do it your own way, but I like to drag my index finger up first. I'll slow this way down and show you how I join these two chords. See how I bring the low notes up on my index finger before I play the high notes? And I use my little finger here because it's a stretch and I like it's the comfort thing for me. I bet Keith and everybody else uses their third finger. So what happens is I buy myself time before I play the top part of the chord by dragging the low part up first. And then that's a little easier to grab afterwards. And I think it's easier because the higher you get on the neck, the easier it is to grab these chords. It's kind of tough to grab this one down here. You have to have a lot of strength to do it. So I drag my index finger up to buy time for the setup for the top two fingers to do their thing. And then there's one other part on this song that you hear go by. And in this tuning, it's these notes, right? This little riff, you know. You can do it like that if you want to. But I, on A5, I grab it with my third finger. And then the open D, and then the third fret on D, and then the open G. And that's the other guitar player playing that really, you know, famous riff. And I kind of, I like to go, bring two notes together there, there too. That's cool too. I'll review the whole thing at medium speed. Three, four, one. And you never use the low E string through the whole thing. It's just the top five strings.